Good morning. How do you manage your time more efficiently? How do you manage your time effectively when using a CRM system like Workbooks? How do you control your working day? Hello, my name is Tim Wilmot. I'm joined by my colleague Peter Johnson and our company, Wizard Systems. We're a leading independent CRM solutions supplier of systems like Workbooks. And we try to help organizations use simple solutions to improve how they go about their sales, uh, marketing and customer service. So thanks for joining us today for our, our first um, session of two work, uh, free Workbooks training sessions today. The morning session, more of a basic one, something of interest to any Workbooks CRM user. And we're going to cover managing activities and using the calendar. And you may pick up some things, some, some information and, and features that you may not be aware of uh, uh, before with workbooks. Now this presentation will only be about uh, 10 minutes, quarter of an hour or so. It's just an overview of how you go about managing activities and using the calendar in workbooks. Uh, my company, Wizard Systems, we offer many extensive training options. If you want to explore those with us, we'd love to have a chat with you. Uh, the audio part of this presentation is one way only. If you've got any questions, please pop those into the question box on your meeting control panel, and Peter and I will uh, answer those at the end of the session. We'll also give you an update on any workbooks product news at the end as well. And this training session is being recorded. After the presentation, you'll get an email from our system maybe after a day or so with a link to the recording, uh, which you can obviously play back and we'll post it up on our YouTube channel as well. So just a very brief mention about Wizard Systems. Long-term independent CRM solutions provider of leading systems like Workbooks. We provide any service around Workbooks, implementation, training, any kind of training, Obviously, that's online right now. We're, we're still in lockdown or semi-lockdown, sort of, I guess, coming out of lockdown a little bit. Um, but we're doing um, our online training here at the moment. And finally, help desk support. If you've got any query or any question about workbooks, um, our help desk is operating as per normal. So let me now hand over to uh, my colleague, Peter. and. Uh, Peter will take us through activities and calendar in Workbooks. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Tim. Uh, hopefully you can hear me, which means everybody else can, and uh, hopefully you can see my screen, if you could just confirm. Yep. And uh, yeah, great. Okay, so good morning to everybody. Um, as Tim mentioned, um, we're going to uh, show this morning some simple uh, activity uh, logging within um, workbooks uh, which will allow uh, very easy scheduling completing of activities and uh, a journalized entry of information that happens or things that you do on a daily basis and be able to log those into workbooks and also introduce there uh, perhaps a, a couple of others that maybe uh, somebody hasn't thought of or used before uh, and also how to organize those activities, calendar views and uh, lists to do that type of thing. So uh, keep this uh, fairly simple. I'm going to uh, go and select a uh, contact uh, in here uh, that I've uh, previously opened. So I've got this uh, contact pool and uh, some of you may know already, but you can schedule and complete activities. Now activities really is the the group name for the things that you would do uh, or organize um, on a daily basis, meetings, phone calls, actions, uh, requests for price lists, that type of thing. Um, and you can record those things that happen uh, or have happened, and you can also schedule them to do in the future. Uh, most of that information uh, is logged in at the activities area of a record. You don't have to go here to record these details. You can do it from the main tab of the record uh, from the new uh, drop down uh, button, uh, a menu option, and you can see uh, you can do many things from here, which are also replicated 
in the activities area. I'm going to look at the activities area here because we have these two buttons uh, which will show uh, information that you can record. Uh, and I think it's fairly obvious what these buttons do, but this one will schedule uh, an activity for the future. Uh, and you can see in here there's things like tasks, phone calls, meetings, all of the normal stuff, along with some other uh, ones in here that you uh, may or may not have on your live system. Um, and I can talk about a couple of those uh, shortly. Uh, and in the record an activity option, these are the things that have happened. Essentially, the difference between scheduling and completing is that the schedule hasn't yet happened and you want to do it in the future, and the record has happened um, and you want to record it in the system. Uh, the definition really when you look at a list is this status uh, and we'll look at the status when we open one of these. If this says new, if it's a new status it hasn't yet happened so it's scheduled for the future and if it shows as complete it means it's been done uh, and if we have a look at a record that's had lots of activity, I've got one here, Alan Whitehead, you can clearly see on the activities tab if I move it across here and you can clearly see there's lots of activity have happened uh, in this particular record. We can click on any of these and open it and see all of the details along with any notes and that type of thing. Um, so you can see very clearly who said what, when, how uh, to a particular customer, client, prospect and so on. You can expand these if you just want a quick preview of the information to see the notes and then you can reduce them. And again, you can see here the status column. So the complete is all those things that have been done. New is anything that's outstanding. If it goes red, or however you're seeing this on your screen there, red, pink, uh, kind of uh, peach type color, um, it's highlighted because the due date has gone past. So instantly when you're looking at a record, you can say, oh, all of these activities were <clears throat> scheduled to happen. Um, however, they haven't yet been uh, notified in the system as complete. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. So let me move on uh, back to the record for Paul here. And I'm going to schedule an activity for the future. So here I'm going to schedule uh, a simple phone call, uh, just a, a quick follow up uh, on some information. And you can see here, here is a typical phone call screen. Yours may appear exactly the same, but your administrator can customize these screens. So you, you might have an extra field or drop down or uh, even less perhaps. Um, but you can see typically marked up uh, on these fields is the blue fields, which are mandatory. So the subject line here, so chase and quick follow up, I intend to do. Uh, and the due date, I intend to uh, maybe uh, do this uh, midweek next week. Um, very simple, and I could put some notes in here. Ask about oh, new stock requirements. Here we go. Yeah, and um, those those fields on the on the on the middle section here, uh, it's assigned to. It's very easy to uh, assign this to somebody else to do. So it will show in there calendar and their activities uh, to be able to do and you can just simply select a particular user uh, that you want to uh, allocate this to or even a queue and we've covered some queues in some previous uh, sessions of these and you can catch that um, if you go to those channels that uh, Tim mentioned earlier. Uh, the type is phone call. This is one to watch a, a little bit later as well. Uh, so this particular type of activity is a phone call. Status is new. Uh, and as I mentioned that the status, when you schedule an activity, it's marked as new. Um, there's a quick way to complete these, but you could do it manually by selecting from this list uh, the uh, other options um, to be able to mark this. So it's easy to see within a list view. And then priority if you need this, um, you could do your high priority calls, perhaps new inquiries and so forth, uh, and mark them as such. And then you can organize your to-do list, your list of phone calls to make uh, in priority order, for example. So I've done that uh, very simply. You'll notice because I started at the person level, 
<clears throat> so I selected Paul's record first and scheduled the call at that level. Um, it's already pre-filled his name and his organization as the primary contact. Um, and in the background, you may also notice that it's related to both of those records. One of the advantages to recording activity at a person level, which realistically you probably uh, using um, the people records and communicating with people so it's a good start point the information will roll up to that person's main employer which is quite useful uh, to do so it's also linked to the organization so the organization will show all of the communication that you've had with all of the people within that organization so nice and simple i'm going to simply save and close that and we can see on Paul's record uh, that it now shows in the activities area the number hasn't yet uh, updated but if I just do a quick save you'll see the number on the tab gets refreshed it does that count and then uh, in here clearly shows the couple of activities uh, one of which is the one that I've just scheduled as a new activity to be done on the 20th very simple very quick and easy to do um, and if something's just happened um, you can just record an activity in a similar way so if i uh, perhaps um, paul called in today for some pricing uh, i could make a note of that really quickly uh, so he called in so i'm going to record a phone call activity uh, notice here when this comes up the status is marked as complete uh, so I'm just going to do price inquiry uh, in here and you might want to put some notes for anybody that's looking at this but in this case I'm just putting a journal entry to say he's called and what it was about so really quick and simple there is another one in here that I um, would like to introduce you to um, this uh, this came up very recently, actually, with um, the COVID not lockdown that we're all um, <laughs> into at the moment. Um, one of uh, my customers uh, were uh, really struggling with filling in a spreadsheet um, that was in the office normally. And of course, everybody's working from home and so forth. Uh, and that shared spreadsheet was difficult to share. And, uh, and, and what I used this spreadsheet for was to record um, on-site project activity from um, users or online activity. And they make a note of that because some of the hours are chargeable and so forth. So uh, we introduced this idea to them. Um, and this is something that your administrator can produce um, in your system uh, really quickly and easily. Um, if they can't, they can ask for some uh, assistance with that. But you can see here, I'm going to, uh, in fact, uh, this is more so as a completed record activity. So I've done some work uh, for a client on a particular project, and I want to pop that into the journal as an activity that's happened. And there's some extra information on this project activity. You can see here, um, we've got the normal fields over here, but I've got some extra fields. So this project ac activity um, may relate to a particular project. And in this example, we are um, using cases um, as uh, projects as well. So there's a, a new site installation going on, and this was a, uh, uh, a particular conf call to um, organize site visits. Yeah, now this is project work. Now we were maybe online for a, an hour, uh, the activity type, um, is it chargeable or not? So in this case, uh, we charge for that time and uh, agreed hourly rates, did any mileage? No. Uh, any expenses? Uh, no as well. So you can see very quickly, instead of filling in a spreadsheet, anybody can do this at any time without uh, locking up that spreadsheet. Uh, save and close. And it's recorded against that contact just like any other activity but you'll notice the type field here uh, is marked as project activity so it, it became very um, relevant to that customer to be able to do it in one central location so anybody could do it at the same time but just like any other activity recording this journal type entry 
So once done, um, how do we see that information? So um, let's go and have a look at the area where I can manage my uh, and other people's activities. So I'm going to go to the landing page here for activities. Uh, again, in some earlier sessions of these, we've looked at landing pages, and created custom views and so on. So the views here, there are some standard ones out of the box. Um, we've got my open activities. Now, as always, anything with my uh, in the landing page is generally those items that are assigned to you or you've decided to choose the little uh, watch button. So uh, the my open activities are those things that are have a type of new that are assigned uh, to me. So the status is new and they're assigned to me to do. All activities, all open, ac open activities is the open activities for everybody. Now, when you're looking at these, these list views are fine, but of course you can filter these in the normal way. So um, there's these activities that should have been done. Uh, they've gone um, that pink color highlighted because they're overdue, but you might want to see this information in a calendar view. Of course, you might be using some of the other features uh, of workbooks where you share this into Outlook with the uh, Exchange synchronization service and anything in my open activities will have synced with your Outlook calendar if you need it to. But you can see this as a calendar uh, in the normal way uh, with any list view that has a date field in it. You can choose the view menu and view as calendar. And you'll notice that I've started on my open activities. So I'm going to view my open activities as a calendar. And you can see in here, um, we have a, a calendar. I've got the monthly view showing, but you could easily change that to a day, a week or a month. Um, you can choose a, a particular date really quickly, uh, travel to a particular date frame. Um, the arrange by here, uh, really kind of organizes the items on the calendar based on a date field. So I've decided in this example to keep them on the due date. So I can see when these are due um, and you can categorize by <clears throat> other things. Perhaps we'll see that in a moment where you can have a, 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 a view of lots of different information and maybe color code them at the same time. But you might use this calendar on a regular basis. So why not? Um, uh, let's choose the view menu and choose save as. So I'm going to call this my open calendar. And choose OK. So I've now got a view uh, down here, which is my open calendar. And I may even shortcut that to the desktop. Uh, of course, then what happens on a regular basis I may come into my workbook system and go straight to my calendar. And you can see here, it's gone straight to my open calendar. And perhaps I want to see information about these uh, uh, items that I've scheduled. And if I click on one of these, it will very simply open that activity um, and see that information uh, straight away. And so if I go to that chase, and quick follow-up call that we wanted to do to Paul. Here's that call. Uh, I can go very quickly to Paul's record by choosing the little button next to the, the, the primary contact name and it will open up Paul's record. I've got the phone number in front of me. I can give him a call straight away. And then when done, um, we can very quickly and easily uh, log some details about the information that we've taken. So if I choose here uh, to update the info. So I put some extra notes in here. About what we talked about and I want to mark this as done. So manually you could potentially do this by putting in the complete data today, changing the status to complete, but there's a little button on the toolbar that's going to help with this. So if I choose complete. Now, in this example, I can complete and close. It's done. I don't want to follow up, but very easily we could complete this and create a follow-on task. So um, I'm going to 
create and complete a follow-on task and I'm going to create the following task for one of my colleagues. So I've done my chase, but we need to send some info across and it's my colleague's job to send that info. So I'm gonna complete this task. So it marks that as complete, closes it and opens the new task, um, which I'm going to just change the subject line here. You can see it's brought across the previous notes. Um, send a prize info and my colleague here at KC yeah, is the person that's going to take care of that and uh, she's going to do that maybe next week, uh, which we promised and talked about in the, the conversation. And you could add some notes here and I can save and close. So clearly you can keep that momentum going in terms of uh, communication and correspondence and those journal entries to show that. Of course, you can manipulate uh, these um, landing pages with different views. I'm just going to stretch this one out. So the example um, was that uh, project type uh, information. Now, that spreadsheet that I mentioned somebody uses, um, we can easily turn this into a very similar view. You could have reports and dashboards, of course. Um, I've got a, a dashboard of those project information. So where that uh, organization were using a spreadsheet, they're now using something similar to this. So they've got a total of uh, all of those uh, project uh, charges, the hours done, hours agreed, chargeable, all of those fields that I filled in, total mileage, expenses, and so on. Um, but maybe you want to keep a quick view of those project activities or any other activities, phone calls, meetings, very easy to customize the landing page. So I'm gonna do a quick one here where I'm going to filter on type. Um, so I'm going to add my filter for type and select the project type. If I hit enter here, you can see these are all the project activities. Uh, and maybe I only want to view those for my particular team. So, um, my team is Jane and Chris, for example. So if I click in here and add a filter to the assigned to, now if it's two people, I'm going to just uh, slip a comma in between oh, those two values. So Jane and Chris, if I apply that, so here are all the project activities for Jane and Chris. And of course, you can add and remove any columns that you wanted to see, um, such as the expenses column and so on. So it's really easily added to here and remove any that you don't want to see. Uh, and then once done, um, I'm going to choose view, save as, and I'm going to do team project activity. There we go and choose OK, and I've got a new view. So I hope to have shown you here um, some re really useful ways of uh, creating a journal of all of that communication and correspondence against uh, a record. Uh, I've also shown you the activity list and how to uh, manipulate that to see the information, perhaps as a calendar view, um, and also uh, very customized views based on unique um, activity types and people and so forth. So, Tim, um, how are we doing for any questions coming across? Have we? Uh... Yeah, um, just before we get into question, questions, so we, we, we've seen here with Workbook CRM, a really easy way of scheduling and keeping on top of um, key activities, interactions you'll have with your customers, calls, meetings, actions, and so on. Uh, we've just shown you some examples of the, the layouts of those screens, those forms. They can be customized. So if you specifically want to record more information about a meeting, um, you've seen some different examples there. There are different screen layouts depending on the type of activity and you can create your own activity types as well um, as as regards well the, the the project examples that we've shown so if there's any 
specific type of activities you want to track and it's not in the list right now with workbooks you can't do this with um, some other CRM solutions but with workbooks you can tailor it you can customize it and furthermore link it to other record types linking files linking multiple documents to uh, a meeting with a customer for example or associating it with um, a case opportunity uh, and so on and Pete's mentioned the Outlook integration, which is an add-on option with workbooks so that you only do things once and you enter in a calendar activity into Outlook or into CRM and it will ping over to the other system. You've got a two-way link, you've got a two-way street, you update one, it's going to automatically update the other one for you. So good, a good way of keeping everything in the loop. And I would say that, um, before we get into the questions, I would say also when you embark on using a CRM system, and there's a number of you using workbooks, that you'll come to some agreement on what types of activities you want to record in the CRM system. It may be that you don't want to record every single phone call. So you decide what are the critical phone calls that I want to track in there? Um, are, they, are they customer service phone calls? Are they commercial phone calls. So you, you come to some kind of a an agreement with your colleagues so that you're all um, using the CRM system in a consistent way, just in case you need to do any reporting on activity levels. Um, you know that everyone is using it in the same way. Everyone's interpreting it in the same way. So questions, let me just um, get to that so i think there's a few um madeline asks if i schedule an activity for somebody else will they get a message to say uh they should do it uh yes yes is the simple answer um so whenever you schedule an activity for somebody else um where the assigned to uh, is chosen so i did it for my uh uh, other colleague and uh, they would get the normal notification now we did cover notifications and setting uh, some preferences in that so uh, they will get notification either on the desktop here or by email whichever their preferences choose and there are some uh, preference options that you can change of how you get that notification but the simple answer to your question was it Madeline um, uh, is yes they will get that notification okay um... Michael asks, we would like to use the project activity. How do we switch it on? Okay, so the, the project activity I showed here um, is really just a little bit of customization. Speak to your administrator. Um, they should be able to create uh, extra screens and templates. Um, and that project one um, is just a customized one in the system. It's not out of the box. It's very easy to configure, though. If you do need any help, of course, as Tim mentioned, um, come and speak to us and we can help you along with this. But they're just the addition of some fields. We added a, a particular type and made it available to all users. Really quick and simple. And of course, because it's in there, it's easy to report on and define separately from anything else if you need to. Okay, um, and Matthew asks, so we've got all the M's today, um, Madeline, Michael and Matthew. Matthew asks, can you add case fields to email, uh, comma, quote, comma, et cetera, um, landing page, so you can then get a report for everything reference the case or the project? I guess um, if Matthew can come back and confirm if I interpreted that question, okay, just put something in the uh, chat there, Matthew. Yeah, thank you very much, Matthew. Okay. Sorry, I. I, I can, was, you, uh... can you add case fields to email, quote, and landing page so you can then get a report for everything reference the case or the project? Yes, um, I think I understand your question, uh, Matthew. Is on the landing page here, so uh, you've you, you've got certain fields uh, for uh, your email landing page. But just like any other area, it is possible um, to uh, add fields to here, or 
perhaps what you're really looking for, Matthew, is a, a report that you can place on the landing page that shows the columns and information that you need. And that is really straightforward. One of the sessions um, we did uh, last week um, was adding reports to your landing page. Uh, and if you've got a specific report with those values in, yes, they can be added to here and very simply accessible. Uh, and as Tib mentioned, if you uh, if we need to help further, Matthew, please feel free to give us a shout. But take, take a look, um, Matthew, at our YouTube channel. Um, go up to YouTube, do a search for Wizard Systems. You'll see our workbooks uh, playlist there. And, and yeah, as Pete says, I, uh, I think it was um, last Thursday in the afternoon we did that um, reports as a landing page. Another clever thing that Workbooks does that is quite difficult with other CRM solutions out there, and you know, really customizing um, that view or that summary view of information um, that's important for you. Um, you know, when you're when you're looking at emails or looking at quotes or looking at activities. So I don't think there's any more questions coming through. Any more late ones come through, we'll answer those separately via email. So thanks very much to the three of you for um, posing those questions. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Um, so just remains for us to um, bring, bring our training session to conclusion, our first of two sessions today. The afternoon session is 3 p.m. UK time, and we're going through setting up users. Uh, you would have had the um, registration link in the email we sent to you, or it's up on our Twitter. You, Go to Wizard Systems UK. You'll see our Twitter feed up there. Uh, probably is on our website as well. Or just um, let or just email um, Peter or myself, Peter at wizard-systems.com or Tim at wizard-systems.com. So watch out for the recording. Uh, thanks very much for attending this morning. Hopefully that's been of use to you uh, to find out maybe a little bit more about how you can manage your activities. Um, and using the calendar in workbooks. Please let us know if there's any other topic that you would find really interesting to know about with workbooks that um, especially would be of interest to the workbooks community out there. We'd love to hear from you, uh, but we'll, we'll be doing this again, um, certainly next, next Thursday, um, another free little training session. Not sure what the topic will be yet, but stay tuned and we'll speak to you soon. But thanks so much, everyone, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.